This video is an affiliation with Collingwood Insurance, but more on that one later. Today, I'm gonna to talk about decision-making at junctions. Should you stop or should you go? Decisions are all about timing. Well, not all about timing, but timing is a very important factor. If you try to make a decision too early, the situation's gonna change by the time you get going. And if you try to make a decision too late, then you're not gonna have time to stop if you need to. When you're approaching an open junction, you want to finish preparing about three to four seconds before you're there. So at the moment I'm slowing down and I'm gonna go into second gear and I'm doing about 15 miles an hour. Now I've got a few seconds to actually look where I'm going and see who's coming around the roundabout to judge whether or not I can go and also see on this occasion that I can't go anywhere because, well, there's nowhere to go. And now I can see no one's coming around because we're all positioned and angled away from the roundabout. I can set off. So now I'm going to show you that again. I'm going to go right at this roundabout. So mirrors, signal right. I'm coming off the gas now, starting to use a little bit of brake to start gradually slowing it down, going down into second gear, bringing the clutch to the bite point. Now I've got a few seconds between here and the line to figure out where people are going. Looks like he's coming around so I can gently stop at the line. Now no one's coming, I can get going. Where a lot of people go wrong is they try to make decisions too early. So I'm going left, mirror signal left, and what they'll do is they'll spend all their time focusing on the traffic now, which is really irrelevant because by the time you get there, it's all gonna change, and that distracts them from slowing down and changing gear. This is a good time to actually check when you actually need to take action. Now they're too far from the roundabout, it's obvious they're not coming around, I can get going. So to summarize, making decisions too early is bad because the situation is going to change when you get there and your attention is taken away from driving, so you lose your position. If there's two lanes, you might drift into somebody else's lane. You may not slow down enough and you may be in the wrong gear. It's rare that new drivers make decisions too late and leave it to the last minute because they're normally anxious about the decision and they're trying to start too early. Ideally, get the car down to around about 10 miles an hour and second gear with the clutch up when you're about three or four seconds away from that giveaway line. Then use those three or four seconds to look and judge whether or not you can go. New drivers need more time to make that judgment, which is why I recommend three or four seconds before the giveaway line being ready with your speed low and your gear in second gear. When you're more experienced, you may be able to do it all together at once and give yourself far less time but if you're inexperienced, take your time. With closed junctions, it really is pointless looking early because all you can see is the sides, like the hedge here and the wooden fence. So there's no point wasting your time looking there. Use your time wisely going round the bend if you're turning left, slowing down, getting first, and getting the car moving really slowly. So by the time you're at the line, you can actually see if anyone's coming and then you can get going. And on really closed junctions like I have here, the same thing applies. I can't see anything to the right, I just got a wooden fence, and to the left, I just have a hedge. But on this occasion, even when I get to the line, I carefully roll up to the line, I still can't see far enough. Someone could come from there, and I can't see far enough to know I can make it. So what I do, when I think it's safe, I'll move forwards, like this person on the left's coming, so I'm not gonna move forward just yet, I'll let them go first. But when it's clear on the left, I'll move forward very slowly, slowly forwards until I can see. Now I can see that red car, I know I've got to stop, I'm only a couple of inches over the line. And then I'll start moving forwards again, very slowly. And now I can see down the road, I can make that decision to go. Don't worry if you poke your nose out slowly. That's what you have to do when you can't see. Better to poke your nose out slowly and warn people that you're trying to pull out when you can't see them and the shootout suddenly. You may not be able to see them, but they should be able to see the front of your car so they can take action if they need to. There really is no other way around this if you cannot see at a blind junction. If you're waiting to pull out of a T-junction and someone is signaling to pull into your T-junction, you can pull out in front of them as long as you're sure that they are actually gonna turn into the road. You can be sure by looking at their speed. If it looks like they're slowing down, then they're most likely gonna turn into the road. However, if they're going fast, they may have just left that indicator on by mistake, so be careful. When you are turning right out of a T-junction, such as I am now, 
I recommend you look left much more than you look right because all the cars on the right are going to block your view of the left as they go past and cyclists and other people walking. Now I can see a gap on the left, then it's worth looking right, marry them up together and then you can go. I'm not saying you shouldn't look right at all. Glance right regularly, yes, but mainly look left because all the cars passing you from the right are going to be blocking your view to the left. So if you're mainly looking left, you'll be able to build up a picture of what's actually coming, but also you're joining the queue of cars from the left. So you've not only got to pull out in front of them like you do on the right, but you've actually got to get up to speed. And if you're watching them, that's going to help your judgment of their speed and help you judge whether or not you have time to go. Of course, if you drive in a country where you drive on the right hand side of the road, which is 60% of the world, you'll be looking rightmost instead of left, because the opposite is going to be true to achieve the same result. Now I'm going to stand at this roundabout. These cars need to give way to these people coming round. I'm going to try and help you figure out how I know whether or not I can go. So, that silver car looks quite far from the roundabout. That helps me judge that they were going to leave. The van, that's trying a trailer or truck should I say, also looks quite far at the time. This silver car I'm not sure of yet, but they're starting to leave so I can tell they're not going to come round. The white car's not going to come round either and neither is the red car. You can see how they're leaving the roundabout. I'm not sure about, no, the white car's definitely not. I thought they might be for a second there. And sometimes you're not sure. If you're not sure, don't go. The van, oh, they look a bit closer. Are they coming round? No. The black van is. You see how much close they are? Had the indicator on as well. The white car is because they're all so close. And the van is, you can tell just by their position. Look at their wheels as well. Are their wheels pointing straight? If I go closer now, hopefully you might be able to see the direction of their wheels as well. So I'll stand here now and do it. And you see the truck is straightening their wheels so they're not coming round. The next car, not this car now, they're leaving, but the car waiting to pull out, I think they're going to come round because they're indicating and they're really close to the right. But the black Prius behind it, that one there isn't. That car did. And the next car pulling out, what do you think? Are they going to leave there, that silver car? Or are they going to go around where you can pretty much tell now they're going to leave? The tractor's going to leave and so isn't the silver car. Now this roundabout, you've got to be more careful because both the oncoming lanes go ahead. It's two lanes to two lanes. So just because they're near the roundabout, it doesn't necessarily mean they're coming round. So you end up waiting for this blue car, say, and they don't come round. They leave. So you really are relying on indicators here. So if I was waiting here, I would only usually wait for people who are indicating right, such as that white car did. The blue car, they're indicating to leave, very good of them, that's really helpful. So everyone in this road knows that the blue car's leaving, but most people tend not to signal. They tend just to go straight, not signal to leave. But if you don't see a signal, it normally means they're going straight. Like this bus, for example, not signaling, but they are going straight. The silver car, not signaling, but it's going straight. The van signaling, and they're going right. So on a roundabout like this, signals are imperative. So to help you judge which way people are going, you can look at their position. Are they close to the roundabout? Are they angled away from the roundabout? You can use their signal. Are they signaling right? Are they signaling left? Or are they not signaling at all, which normally means that they are going straight. But also look at their wheels to get an early clue. If you can see their wheels are tilted in towards the roundabout, they're probably coming round. But if you can see their wheels are starting to straighten, that can be a clue that they're leaving too. Speed can help because people generally speed up as they leave roundabouts, although it's the least reliable source of information. Local knowledge helps loads. Like on that last roundabout I showed you, I know both lanes can go ahead, so I'm expecting people in the lane nearer the roundabout to be also going ahead instead of just coming round. That roundabout normally catches new drivers out because they're waiting for everyone in the right lane, expecting them to come round where I would guess less than one in 10 cars actually go around there. It's probably closer to one in 20 cars actually do a right turn and go around that roundabout. If, you, if you've got local knowledge and you know that, that can help you with your decision too. Sometimes when you approach a junction and you're in the queue of cars and there's a queue of cars on your right, 
like I have here, you can't actually see right, you can't see in front of them. Normally, the left lane will stop further ahead of the right lane, but here, generally, people in the right lane go way over the line, and for you to see in front of them, you're gonna to have to put yourself halfway in the roundabout. So in roundabouts like this, like here, where it's hard to see right, you're better off waiting to see after the car is gone. Now I can see that that white car is coming, so I am gonna wait for them. The shield, which is this truck, hasn't started. Now the shield, the truck has started, that's gonna block cars off to the right, which means I can continue. I'm going ahead of this roundabout. All the cars on the right aren't indicating, which means they're going straight, so I can continue and I'm gonna go left at the next roundabout. No cars on the right, that's quite easy, and the truck's going around anyway, so they would be the shield. I've got just about enough room to leave here and exit and be out of the way with this red light. If there was another car there, I would have waited before the giveaway line, because I don't want to stop halfway across the roundabout. On that roundabout where I said, if you have restricted view because there's a queue of cars next to you, you may be able to pull out at the same time as them. It all depends on the situation, how fast you can go and how fast you think they're gonna go. But it is a bit of a risk because they may go to go and then suddenly break hard and then you're gonna have to suddenly break hard too. So I'm gonna go on these three mini roundabouts again near Greenstead. Green lights are there. I'm ignoring the lights now because they will be green when I get there. Or well, they'll be amber, it doesn't matter. They won't be red. I'm already jogging along in second gear. No cars in the right lane there, so I know I can go. The van's come after I started, so it's fine. The BMW had time to make it before me. I had to get going, but they did. Going into the right lane here to go ahead. Got to give way to the cars on the right. No cars on the right. Got space to fit after the roundabout, so I'll go after the roundabout. I'm gonna go right at the next mini roundabout, so I'm indicating right. And now I've got cars on the right, I need to wait for in the right lane, or looks like our left, but it's their right, like that silver Mercedes. And that silver car there is what I call a shield. They come round, they stop that Fiesta from coming, which means I can go. I didn't take that one just to show you that time, but I will take the next one. So I've got loads of cars coming from the right. Now that right lane is filled with cars. I really need a shield to be able to go. Is that BMW a shield? They're in the right lane, look. So I will start moving and I'll drive towards and around the back of the BMW, and then that truck can then go around the back of me. So the BMW is a shield for me, then I became a shield for the truck. At this roundabout, too easy. Nothing happening, so I'll just go, I'm gonna stay in the left lane, I'm gonna straight line it. There's two lanes approaching the roundabout, there's two lanes on the roundabout. Try and stay in your lane and obviously drift to the left lane to leave if there's one lane on the exit. Now I'm approaching that roundabout I spoke about earlier when I said both the oncoming cars go ahead, both lanes can go ahead, and it's completely empty. All right, great. One time I want traffic for the camera and it is empty. Sometimes the only time you're gonna get an opportunity to pull out of a roundabout when there's constant cars coming from the right, like now, is if you get someone come round the roundabout and stop all these cars from coming round, like this red car here, you see? That could potentially be a shield, although they also went round the roundabout, so you probably still have to wait. If they went into this exit road, then that would have been your ticket to pulling out. So constant traffic, really not much of a break at all, looking for people coming round. They're coming round the roundabout, but they are coming all the way around, so you might not make it. You may make it, depends how quick off the mark you are, because you had a little bit more time there. That probably would be an opportunity for most people, but you're ideally looking at them to go into this exit road here. Not many people are doing that. Oh, you had a break in the traffic, so you could pull out then. With some roundabouts, the odds are stacked against you. Right, that would have been an opportunity there, because they took quite a long time to come round. And if there was anyone coming out of that entrance, that would have slowed them down. It all depends on how quick you are at getting going. Don't go faster than you can handle. As a new driver, it's important to understand and accept that you will need bigger opportunities than experienced drivers. If you try to take small opportunities like an experienced driver does, you're more likely to make a mistake, which would probably lower your confidence and make you second guess what you do next time. So it's better to only take the gaps in traffic that you feel comfortable with. You're not very quick at getting the car moving when you're starting out. 
and also it, it takes you longer to judge whether people are coming round or not because you don't have that experience yet. You will gradually gain that with time. To get a driving license, you don't have to be really good. You just have to be an, an, at an acceptable standard. You can take the easy opportunities. You're not missing easy opportunities and you're not missing shields or some people call shields blockers. They're basically when a car comes round the roundabout, blocking people off from the right, allowing you to go. Very important to look out for that. So don't just stare right at the people coming. Also look over the roundabout to see who's coming round because they are also your opportunity. As you can see from those video clips, not everybody signals correctly. Some people signal right as they're leaving the roundabout and some people don't signal at all. And if you're on a test and you make a judgment based on someone's signal and position and they do something else, that doesn't necessarily mean you failed. So let's say you're going ahead at a roundabout and you've got to give way to the right and the car coming round the roundabout isn't indicating right, doesn't look like they're coming around, looks like they're going to leave before they get to you so you can go. But you start moving off and then they come round anyway. That does happen. If it really isn't your fault, you most likely will still pass the driving test. It's up to the examiner to make that judgment call of, yeah, I agreed with the pupil, really didn't look like they were coming round. I would have gone as well, but then they came round anyway. So it's not your fault in that situation. It's very clear. Then you will still likely pass. I've had experience of that when I've been sat in on the test and the examiners had to use the dual control brake because that very thing's happened, but the examiner noticed them come around at the last minute. My pupil didn't, yet he still passed that pupil because he realized that yes, he's got 40 years of driving experience and may recognize these things a bit early and maybe a bit quick to, a bit more quick to react, but my pupil was driving well, was making sound decisions, and to expect that pupil to be at his level isn't really very fair. So he still passed them. If you're struggling with decisions, the two most likely culprits are either you're going too fast towards the junction or you're looking right too early. If you're going too fast towards the junction, you're not giving yourself enough time to prepare and to judge. And if you're looking right too early, you may think, oh, I'm looking right early now, so it's gonna help my judgment, but it doesn't because everyone you're looking at is irrelevant and they're gonna be gone by the time you get there. And then you probably end up going in too fast because you haven't concentrated on slowing down. Resolving those two issues are normally the first step to improving decision-making. Well, I hope this video helps you with decision-making. If you think it does, please give it a thumbs up and check out Conningwood and Confused in the description. Conningwood are an insurer, and if you're looking to insure yourself on somebody else's car, they can really help you because they allow you to do that without affecting the car owner's policy or risking their no claims bonus. Via the link right now, there's up to 35% off and a 20 pound Amazon gift card. Using the link does support this channel. Also, there are long-term and short-term policies available. And if you cancel a long-term policy, if it's cheaper, you might go for the long-term policy, but if you cancel it early, you get a pro rata refund for what you haven't used. I also recommend you check out Confuse.com because Confuse compare many insurers so you can find the best price and make sure you're getting the best deal. What I, also like about, what I also like about Confused is that you fill out one form and then you can change things like mileage, excess, and even change the vehicle. So you're thinking what car is the cheapest car for me to insure? You can do one form and just keep putting in different registration numbers of different vehicles to see what comes out cheaper. There's a link in the description to Confuse and using that link does support this channel. So thank you very much. For my future videos, please subscribe. And until the next one, cheerio.